Hey guys, it's Keisha. It's Talk Ish Monday. Um, today I'm actually going to do a review on three different shows. I'm going to do a review on Basketball Wives LA, um, The Real Housewives of Atlanta, and the reunion of blood sweat and heels um sorry i didn't get a chance to do my commentary last night on uh the bravo shows i was filming for forever 21 last night um so forgive me for that but let's get into my review first of basketball wives la tonight episode i give a b plus it was it was good. It was a bunch of ratchet foolery that I was here for. It gave me a lot of entertainment. So, uh, let's get into some of the key things that really caught my attention. Um, first of all, Drea and Malaysia came to the party, honey, giving us full thought attire. They look like they were two extras from a French Montana video. Them hoes was giving us sex and body, and I was just living for it, baby, because you know it is about it is about to be a thought summer over here in St. Louis for Keisha Renee Irvin. She is getting this body together. I'm about to be serving you body yaddy yaddy this summer. So niggas get ready, bitches hide your man. <laughs> I'm gonna be looking like Drea in 2.2 seconds. The body, not the face, because Drea got a butter face. But anywho, um, Sunday, aka Baby Fat, Drea, that was a good Joan. You got that one off. Uh, was totally one hundred percent wrong for going in on Drea's son, calling that little boy a pansy, basically calling him a fag, basically calling him a homosexual, which was not right. And if he was, who the fuck cares? But that was so wrong for her to attack an innocent child, especially when her daughter over here giving blow drops for a pack of eight inch weave. Like, bitch, get your motherfucking life, and your daughter got. Pictures on the net of her giving some awesome jawsome, giving some skullduggery to a nigga that looked like Lil Bow Wow, some bullshit. Girl, get your life. You can't talk about nobody goddamn kids, so you need to have every motherfucking seat in Bush Stadium, bitch. Um, Drea and her tears after the fight, it was just sad and pathetic to me because... She was embarrassed that Jackie told her the news about her nigga cheating with um Jackie's daughter in front of Sunday, which was very wrong. Uh, Jackie, messy, fat, neck ass. Kamora Lee Simmons having ass, neck <laughs> ass. Should have pulled her to the side and told her by herself. But Jackie is messy. Jackie did what she had to do to keep a spot on the show. So she had to cause some, you know, drama. Um, And it was wrong. Um... But the fact still remains, whether she told you the shit in private or in front of people, bitch, your dumb ass is still with this nigga. He done set up her and fed you a whole lie about how he got the uh, Jackie daughter, uh, somebody sent him a picture of her, and then he saw her in real life, and she was too thick, too fat for him in real life, so he didn't want to fuck with her. And so he basically passed her on to the next man. Girl, get your life. That nigga is lying to you. That's some old ignorant ass little boy bullshit ass lie that he didn't came up with. He was fucking with her ass and his ass got the fuck caught up. That nigga looked like he's slow. He looked like he didn't even pass from the fifth grade. Drea, I feel so sorry for her because women will stick with a nigga just because of a look. Just because of money, financial reasons, because they heart is invested in this shit. But, baby, when it's just all that drama over some dick, it is not that motherfucking serious, baby. Because, trust me, these niggas out here don't give two fucks about a bitch and they motherfucking feelings. So, Drea needs to get her life in order and um, really reevaluate some things when it comes to this nigga that she dating that look like he like dick just as much as she do. Um, So, that was my review on Basketball Wives LA. Um, On to Real Housewives of Atlanta. Last night episode was everything and motherfucking more. I give last night episode of it, uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta a motherfucking A+. Plus. Everybody brought their ratchet A game. They gave us nothing but ratchet uh, reality TV. And baby, I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning after I came home from shooting. And was in my bed eating some motherfucking piece of rolls. Getting my motherfucking life on. First of all, Phaedra is a motherfucking idiot. She is a goddamn jackass. For walking in to the, the to the little common room area, wherever the fuck they was in the hotel, and she saw Apollo and Kenya having a conversation, and immediately got to rolling up her, rolling her eyes and curling them big ass, soup cool ass lips of hers. What's this all about? 
First of all, bitch, they was having a motherfucking conversation. If your ass would have been sitting up here with your ass all up in the air, you would have found out that your nigga was lying to you the whole motherfucking time telling you that this girl had said something to him about them sleeping together. And she never said that. And he basically came out and said that shit on uh, last week's episode that she never said that. He made up the lie just to have a dig at her. And that dig ended up making y'all relationship even more strained the relationship between Phaedra and Kenya they were already on the outs but then when Apollo set up there and made up that last time about something she said she wanted to smash that made the shit even worse so Phaedra coming in there tooting up them big ass lips of hers telling what this shit all about and then gonna get mad and leave first of all bitch you don't let no bitch run you up out of no goddamn room ain't no way in here I would have left with a whole attitude you made yourself look stupid leaving running back to your room thinking this nigga's gonna run in behind you and he did after after like 20 minutes he came gave you his ass to kiss just like a nigga and was like man shit i'm up out of here i ain't got time for this bullshit you looked stupid you played right into kenya's hand you looked like a motherfucking idiot i will say kenya is messy kenya is a lot of things but the girl never did come on to your motherfucking man they was cool you got mad and your nigga lied to you your niggas out here cheating when he sat up there and said that yeah i think that everybody cheat that was him basically saying, bitch, I've been cheating. I've been out here eating pussy. I've been eating. I've been eating. I've been eating all these other pussy pussy bitches pussy. I've been eating. I've been eating. That's exactly what your niggas out here saying. He's out here fucking. He out here getting pussy while he's tricking off $5,000 in a motherfucking uh, strip club, like he said. He, Apollo, wants some young and hot. Phaedra is too goddamn old. She tried to be too damn conservative. She dressed like somebody 95 year old grandmama always wearing capri pants and sandals and shit, bitch. Get some motherfucking flavor in your life. Phaedra in real life is ghetto as fuck. She putting on a whole act on this damn show. And Apollo ain't here for that shit. Um, Greg old ass trying to fight. Peter was fucking hilarious. That nigga like he was about to have a heart attack at any motherfucking minute. He looked like he was just like praying to God on the inside. Please don't let this nigga hit me. Please don't let this nigga hit me. But I got to say face. I done went too far and I came back out of it now. Like Greg was about to be on cardiac arrest if that man would have hit him. Greg needed to stop that bullshit. I thought that Cynthia was an absolute punk pussy ass nigga for letting nene big bird burton ernie looking ass sit up there and call her motherfucking husband a bitch yes he was acting very bitchy he was acting like a bitch ass nigga the bitch assness was coming up out of that damn dark skin ass pores of his but no way in hell will i have let my so-called girlfriend sit up here and call my husband a bitch and especially on national television and that bitch would still be breathing nene ass would have been slapped the fucking her motherfucking mouth her her and that fucking Hulk Hogan ass wig of hers that she's been wearing that looks absolutely atrocious would have motherfucking got red for filth. Cynthia needs to get a motherfucking backbone. Stop trying to be the peacemaker. She don't need to be on the show no more. She's absolutely whack. Her nigga bring more flavor to the show than she does. He needs to be the fifth of... Uh, or the fifth or the sixth goddamn housewife, not Cynthia ass, because that damn storyline about them goddamn fibroids, bitch, wasn't nothing. Everybody got fibroids, bitch. That ain't shit. Don't nobody give a fuck. Um, so that was my review of Atlanta uh Housewives and the Blood, Sweat, and Heels reunion. It was good. I give it an A plus. Them bitches brought it. I know they're gonna get picked up for another season. Everybody looks beautiful. Um, to me, uh the best dress. Uh, last night to me was Melissa. She had really uh, cute hair and makeup and the um, outfit all went together. Um, Micah was serving us Apollonia 6, Vanity 6 uh, realness. I was there for it. Geneva looked like a man in a dress as always. Uh, Demetria looked cute. Um, Brie, she looked all right. She was just there. Um, Daisy looked a lot better with her Beyonce wig on. I really didn't care for her outfit. Her titties wasn't sitting up the way it needed to in that dress. Um, I just thought that Demetria, Geneva, and uh, Brie are a bunch of miserable, ignorant-ass bitches that have no motherfucking sympathy. They are going for blood when it comes to Micah. They are just a bunch of big, miserable-ass bullies, especially Demetria. I hate her motherfucking... 
uh, personality. She's just a cold-hearted, ignorant-ass bitch. Geneva, just mad because she ugly. Um... They just, they just whack as hell to me. Um, I really hope that next season, Micah gives it to their ass and stop crying every motherfucking five seconds and really sort of cussing bitches out. Daisy as well. Melissa gotta stop playing the motherfucking fence and pick a side because them hoes are the absolute worst. I would not and could not be friends with Geneva Bree or Demetria because I'm just some sad ass hoes that just sit around and want to talk about everybody else and try to pretend like they life is perfect when they life ain't perfect they probably all at home going through shit like i just cannot with them like oh fuck them hoes but anywho um we have two more days of filming for the first half of season one of forever 21 like y'all don't know how excited i am for may 4th for the premiere of forever 21 like this show is going to be so good everybody is bringing their a game what we're gonna do is they're gonna be 10 episodes uh, for season one, we're going to do a split season. We're going to debut the first episode, May 4th. That's on a Sunday. And every Sunday for five weeks, um, we will be premiering a new episode on my channel, the Color Me Pink channel, and the Dutch Jackson 1 channel. So every Sunday uh, after May 4th, there will be a new episode of February 21 up. After the fifth episode, we'll go on hiatus for the summer. And then we'll be back in September with the last five episodes. Like I said, this we are giving you Be and Mary Jane, The Game, Real House Husbands of Hollywood, Realness. It is funny. The show is completely improv. Um, it's non-scripted. It's going to be just so great. We have a lot of surprises for you. We're giving you fashion. We're giving you hair. We're giving you love. We're giving you friendship. We're giving you sex. We're giving you drama. We're giving you music. It's going to be so good i'm bringing my a gang with this i'm about to tug at your heartstrings we're all about to tug at your heartstrings um like everybody is just awesome on this show and i'm just so happy and blessed i've never been this content and happy with my life and where i'm at right about now with my career and the things that i have going on uh pretty ratchet things is doing great if you have not purchased a shirt yet please visit pretty ratchet things that's pretty ratchet T-H-I-N-G-Z dot com and cop you one of our Pretty Ratchet Things shirts. We have over 10 shirts on our website available in men and women's. Um, I'm just so happy. Material Girl 3 prayfully will still be out April 1st. If not, it will be out most definitely the first week of April. I'm still working on it. Um, I'm just happy. I'm just happy. I'm just th blessed. I'm just in a really good spot in my life right about now. And I'm just content with my life. And I ain't got no man right about now giving me no distractions, no headache. And I'm at a place right now where I'm just waiting on God to send me my husband. Because, baby, I've been doing some picking. And the picking that I've been doing has been absolutely motherfucking wrong. So I said, you know what, bitch? Sit back and wait on God and stop doing the picking. Because you are picking wrong. These niggas ain't shit. So, bitch, sit the fuck back. Concentrate on your career. And ever since I made the decision, I have absolutely been at peace. So I just wanted to share that with you all. I thank you all for your love and support and for just rocking with me. You all are the best. Um, I just love y'all. So I'm uh, going to leave y'all. We're going to get back to work. Y'all have a good night. Be safe. Be happy. Be blessed. Pray. Support one another. And just have a good night. Love you all. Bye.